Canada, the true north, strong and free, a land of fully independent democratic government. Nah, just kidding. Canada's head of state is Queen Elizabeth. Hello! As the head of state, the crown, the king or queen, technically has the final say. But in practice, the crown's role is just ceremonial, like a rubber stamp. The Prime Minister and Parliament do most of the decision-making. The Prime Minister is the head of government for Canada. Here's an analogy. If the government were a hockey team, the Prime Minister would be something like the head coach, and the Crown something like the owner. Without the owner, the team wouldn't exist. But without the head coach, nothing would get done. Over time, the Crown has given Canada the right to be a democracy to get things done on its own. Let me explain. The first well-known democracy originated around 500 BCE in ancient Athens in Greece. Unlike today's democracies, Athens was a direct democracy. That meant that every non-foreign male citizen voted on the creation of laws and served as a jury when criminals were brought before the public. But democracy happened in other places aside from Greece. We find roots of democracy in 6th century India, among the Iroquois Six Nations, and in the traditions of Mi'kmaq leaders here in Canada. Just like calculus, the theory of evolution, and inexplicably popular boy bands, democracy has appeared independently in several places in human history. This means there is at least a two out of three chance that it's a good idea. The roots of Canada's democracy began in Britain in the 13th century. The elites of British society began to challenge the British king's authority. At the same time, the king needed cooperation from those elites in order to take tax money from the people of his kingdom. In order to calm them down and keep control, the king started to give them more say in everyday decisions and created a parliament in order to allow them to discuss new laws and taxes. Now, any average Joe could finally dream of influencing the political process. Assuming, of course, that he was already an immensely wealthy and powerful duke or baron. However, the king still maintained quite a bit of control on a day-to-day -day basis. But this is how the journey from the monarchy to democracy began. When the British crossed the Atlantic to explore North America, they brought their democracy with them. To see what happened next, keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Help us teach Canada about politics. Share this video on Facebook or Twitter.